All right, one of the big problems uh, that we have been highlighting this afternoon, several state pension funds will go bust in just a few years. That's according to our next guest, Eden Martin, president of the Commercial Club of Chicago, also lawyer Sidley Austin. His business group has been warning of a financial implosion for several years now, and with states struggling to meet their obligations, its predictions appear to be right on the money, unfortunately uh, for us, but uh, congratulations, I guess in some sort of dark way to you, Eden. Uh, you also have a, a, an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, which I think uh, really clearly highlights the issues, pointing out the problems in Illinois alone. $80 billion in unfunded uh, pension obligations, $40 billion in unfunded retiree medical obligations. Um, if this is the case at every uh, one or most of the states across the country, what are we to do? Well, I think Illinois is the worst. Uh, every state's got the problem to some degree, but uh, we're, we're at the bottom, according to Pew. The numbers that you cited are uh, conservative. They're what the state uh, thinks the numbers are. Josh Rao, another professor at Northwestern, thinks that the number's actually much bigger. But uh, it's huge either way, and uh, we think that you need to do two things. One is to reform the pensions, to reduce the cost prospectively so that uh, people's rights that they've accrued up until now are fully protected, but in the future we feather the cost down. And that leaves the question of what to do with this huge unfunded liability. Let's call it $80 billion today. If you reform it, maybe we get it down to 50 or $55 billion, but it's still huge. And you have that problem in, uh, to lesser degrees in states, and those numbers don't include, include the municipalities. So it's a very large unfunded liability. Yeah. And I think what's happening is that there are pressures building up to, call, to ask the federal government to bail out the states and municipalities and these pension funds. Well, I was going to say, you know, if you want to broaden it so, we can, so viewers can see it from a national perspective, conservative estimates put the problem at about a trillion dollars for all, fiscal, uh, all 50 uh, states. And the fiscal issue, uh, if you look at it from the point of view of Northwestern and the Chicago Booth School, which, which you mentioned, uh, is a $3 trillion problem. Uh, so. You know, even if you start talking about how you could change the issues now by taking people's pensions away and having them invest in more modern 401ks, you still have to deal with this hole at some point, don't you? That's exactly right, and it's a huge hole even if you get reform. Uh, Professor Rao put out a paper a couple of days ago that says that uh, on recent data, the number has gone up uh, even above three trillion. But here's the choice. It's either going to be borne by the states and municipalities or they're going to go to Washington and ask for a federal bailout and, and they will try to be successful. And uh, I suppose as an Illinois citizen, uh, in a sense, we would get relief. We're the worst if the federal government bailed us out. But I think it would be a terrible thing to do from the standpoint of the country, uh, the economic situation we find ourselves in, and it would be terrible from the standpoint of you know, government and federalism. You know, Eden, no one's gonna argue with you that we don't need another bailout of any sorts. But let me ask you, I'm a little confused because wasn't it just last week that we were talking about, what, $24 billion in aid to states who needed help to uh, make sure that uh, firemen and policemen were out there, teachers were, could keep on teaching, and now you're saying we just gotta, the government's got to work with these states, put some pressure to kind of get their financial house in order. How, how do you do it when they can't even make sure they've got enough money to pay teachers and firemen? Well, there are, there are two different uh, approaches here and a whole range of things in between. There are folks in state and municipal government who would like to see the federal government just take this burden off their shoulders and bear it and the Treasury issues money and the states are relieved to start over. Uh, what I advocated and our group advocated in that uh, paper that you referred to yesterday is that uh, the federal government should not do that and if there is a way to provide some assistance in the form of uh, low interest loans or something of that kind that could serve mm -hmm. as an incentive, then the federal government could put conditions on it that require the states to get their house in order. That would be much preferable, we think. Well, and I think uh, important to get your take on the aid to states, uh, as it was called by uh, the government, although that $26 billion, a lot of it was tied to more spending next year. It, it, in other words, it was a prod that the administration was using to force, if you can believe it, even more spending. Yes, and it was, it was a, it sounds like a huge number, but it was relatively small. It was for one year and it was for current operating expenses. What we're talking about is a multi-trillion dollar obligation and it would extend over many, many years as people uh, uh, receive their pensions. It's, it's a much more ominous threat to, I think, the American economy.
I mean, Eden, you know, it's so funny. Well, it's not funny. I mean, as you say, it's a big threat to the U.S. economy. Uh, it seems like Washington's been trying to put out one fire after another over the last couple of years. Do you think that the folks in Washington understand how serious a problem is? Is there, again, enough political will, political momentum to kind of get this situation back on track? But Barack Obama, the president, is a very, very smart man. He was in the Illinois legislature. He knows about this problem. Um, the question is, what do you do about it? It's so enormous. And uh, but, but that goes back to my essentially, question. Is, essentially, is there enough recognition, do you think, in Washington among uh, officials there well, and politicians to deal with the problem well, at this well, point and, and enough political will to do it? And well, I, have to, I have to ask well, also, Eden, beyond the recognition, I mean, there, uh, the Wall Street Journal charged that the administration uh, was giving a lot of money in the state aid bill to teachers so that their unions would turn around and give $100 million back to the Democratic Party. And I mean, you look at government workers getting an average of, I think, 120000 where Whereas people in the private sector, uh, similar jobs are only getting 70,000. There is some uh, momentum for them to keep the situation at the status quo, uh, isn't there? I think there's uh, some momentum, but I, I hope there's no momentum for a federal bailout of these pension funds because I think that would be a different order of magnitude and I think it would have much more serious, profound effects long term on uh, the ability of local governments and the incentive of local governments to deal with their own affairs. If we don't do anything, which you obviously is one of the options, you know, of doing nothing, you say the consequences obviously would be painful. How painful? How could you see this? Give me the doomsday scenario, if you would, Eden. Well, all right. In Illinois, uh, we have uh, five pension plans, and they're probably going to start running out of money. The first one may run out of money sometime, Professor Rao estimates, in the next 10 years. Chicago has four pension plans. One of those will probably run out within the next 10 years, depending on how the assets perform. Then what? Then you've got a crisis. Retirees and workers won't be receiving their money from the pension funds. Mm -hmm. They will claim, certainly, that the state or the city are responsible, and you'll have a big legal argument about whether the state is a guarantor or the city's a guarantor. I think it's likely they are not. Nobody knows until it's litigated. But in any event, the state doesn't have any money. And we're talking about a very large increase in taxes to cover this hole if the way we do it is on the revenue side rather than on the cost and reform side. So it's a big ticket item. It's basically mm -hmm. taking hot air out of the balloon because we've been borrowing and ignoring costs and we're not going to be able to continue to do that anymore. And the only two ways right. to deal with it are cost side or or revenue side or some combination and any of those are going to be painful it's a tough one that's for sure all right Eden, thank you so much Eden martin uh, uh writing about uh, really the, the tough situation with pension funds at this point he wrote about that in the wall street that's right, Journal. president of the commercial club of chicago a lawyer at sidley austin we appreciate you joining us